Fear and hunger is not only difficult, it's also just unfair and boring. How do you even like playing it? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. For, for a second, I, I, I transformed into a game journalist. What? Hmm, but you know what? This made me think more about the possibility of using what the game gives me to get access to the secret easy mode, where you are so powerful that a strategy is not even required. So... Are you ready to get access to the secret knowledge? Oh, and just to clarify, I do not think all the game journalists are bad or something. For sure out there, there are some people that love their job and put a lot of passion into it. They give perfect analysis on video games. I am more emphasizing on the stereotype which was created about the journalists being... Wait, wait a second. Am I really explaining that what I said was intended as a joke? Who cares? It's time to start the journey to unlock easy mode in fear and hunger! For this mission in particular, we have to start with a little premise. Because there are some ways to get access to either a lot of stuff or the endings in a very easy way, which we will not use. For example, you're able to go from Dungeon Knights to the original game, and this will leave you with all the stuff you bought from the vendors and with all the skills already unlocked on the Hexen. But if you do this specific thing, you will never be able to get Enki S ending. And instead, I want the possibility to get everything with an easy mode. And also so no worries, we will get much stronger than that. And then I still want to do each ending's requirements for the ending itself. What does this mean? Maybe you don't know this, but there are some ways to skip the requirements. The one you may be more familiar with is the presence of a spot in the entrance of the dungeon where, if you click on it, it allows you to immediately leave the dungeon without ever checking on the guard. That's not easy. That's just a lie. We did not do anything. These are the two only limits I give myself. We are gonna do everything in hard mode, and I love the irony of achieving easy mode starting from hard mode of all possible difficulties. And I don't know if you can feel my excitement, but usually I do my best to not give in to temptation and to not use glitches and bugs. Today, instead, we are gonna behave like children who get unlimited supplies of candies. And with that out of the way, let's start. I will do this as Ragnavalder, but you can really pick whoever you want. In the intro, the only important thing you need to take is dash, in order to be able to kite opponents and to speed up the process overall. And after the... Uh, eh? Oh! We are already in the starting zone. I guess we can start to break the game! The first thing to do is to save scum until you get one very specific layout of the entrance of the dungeon. You can realize when you found the correct one, once you have the crate and the table on the right, and you have nothing on the left. Why are we doing this? Uh, come back in 15 minutes, then I will tell you. Now it's a good moment to introduce you to the concept of debug spots. Also, I know I am talking a lot and we still didn't do anything, but no worries, explanations will be over very soon. So, debug spots. They basically are leftovers from development. The developer probably used them to playtest certain zones or to get some characters to test some interactions. And why am I talking about them? Because in the entrance there are two debug spots. The first one, the one we will use, is in this exact place. If you click here, you will instantly get in your party the knight and the outlander. And yeah, the reason for which I did not get the outlander and is also one of the reasons for which I started with Ragnavalder is to explain that you cannot have multiples of the same characters at once, except goals and skeletons. And just to precise, the other debug spot, which is here, gives some very good stuff, but there is one reason for which we will not use it. This spot has one particular switch, which gets turned on, and makes the game think your main character is the mercenary. This will impact on a lot of events, starting from the fact that some characters will not be able anymore, for example, to learn the skills from the Hexen if you do this. And there are ways to play around this or to gain an even bigger benefit from it. And later we will be forced to use one of these, but the extra power we could get from this manipulation is so low that it really won't matter in the future. Just trust me, everything will make sense very soon. 
So, now that you have two or three party members, depending on who you play as, you should be able to go through the whole dungeon pretty easily. So, paying attention to take the small key on Rudimer table in the torture chamber, the next step is to reach Mahabre. This means taking the cube of the depths from the cave dweller village and reaching level 7 basement. And I know you may say that's pretty tough, but I want to remind you we have at least two party members from the start. The chances of you losing a battle are basically zero, and even if you lose limbs, so no worries because I have a special plan to show you later. But Frapolo, this is supposed to be easy mode. You're basically skipping a huge portion of the game without saying anything. Cut the cleaver on the first turn, then guard on the second turn with the main characters. Focus on destroying the legs afterwards and then deal with the head. The yellow mages can be skipped. For the first one, you just go all the way around it. The second one, you jump from the wooden platform and you rush. You are not gonna get any limbs cut off, you're just gonna get bleeding on you. If the crowmoller spawns and you are very scared, just to go all the way back and exit the zone. This will get rid of the crowmoller. Happy now? Oh, and in case you need more food, there is another thing we can do. In the mines, in two layouts out of three, in the salmon snake room, if you walk on this exact spot, you will get one meat pie, and you can walk an infinite amount of times. So, in case you have access to this, the next step, of course, is to collect 99 meat pies. Okay, so, we already have uh, at least two party members, the hunger is no more a problem. What else could we do? <laughs> you innocent child. Ta-da! Now we are inside of Mahabre. Why did we go here exactly? Because the next step is to get a quill. Now, let me precise something. The game offers you multiple ways to get a quill. If you play as Darcy, you can skip dash in order to get a guaranteed one. You can get one randomly from crates. The Pinecomb Pig is able to randomly give you one. The Cave Dweller Vendor has a 50% chance to sell it in a run. Or you have a 50% chance if you steal from the Iron Shakespeare. Are you seeing the problem? Among all of these, there is not a guaranteed way accessible to all characters. But there is an easier method. Before proceeding though, you may want to do something else. We are gonna die. And uh, yeah, I, I, I am not joking. We we are gonna die, guys. Enter into a battle with the Lord of the Flies and intentionally lose to the coin flip attack. Don't be nervous, don't be nervous, everything was programmed from the start. Dying to the coin flip attack of the Lord of the Flies will always send you into one of the two cages present in Mahabre. And remember I told you to collect the key from the table of Captain Rudimer? The key will allow us to always escape from this room. And you may say, but uh, Frapollo, why did we do all of this? You see... This just got rid of the phobia of the character we are playing as. For the way Fear and Hunger works, Teratophobia, Phasmophobia, all the phobias of the game are states applied to the characters. And since this is an RPG, when a character dies, all the states present on the character disappear. So, do you see here there is written Phasmophobia? That's false, and I'm gonna prove it. I coded in a battle with a ghost to show you that we do not get the phobia status in battle. It is a detail of kinda minor importance, but since this is easy mode, we can't have a phobia in easy mode, come on! Now, let's go back to the quill problem. What we are gonna do is we are gonna take advantage of one precise debug spot which solves everything. It is in the Temple of Torment, in the past, in this exact place. This gives quill, empty scroll, some armors, some other items we will mention later, some party members like the girl, enables certain stuff related to terror and starvation difficulty, but we don't care about that. But, and here it comes the problem, it makes the game think you are the marriage. Also, be sure to click 99 times so we get 99 empty scrolls, okay? Let me elaborate more on the marriage thing. We cannot dash anymore, for example. Why? That's because the game is checking if the marriage, our supposedly main character, has dash. And marriage does not have dash. Is that a problem? Yes, but there is an easy solution to that. You see, Dash is not the only thing that considers marriage as your main character. Empty Scroll thinks our main character is marriage as well. And I think you know where I'm going with this. If we use the Empty Scroll, we can teach the marriage skills, not anymore to Ragnavaldor or to whoever your main character was. So, if we use an Empty Scroll to teach ourselves Dash, we can start dashing again, because now the marriage has Dash. But regardless of how you look at it, having someone not in the party as the main character, despite having some funny implications, for example the fact that even if your previous main character dies you don't actually lose the run, it can still create a lot of bugs. 
Let me repeat, this may and will cause a lot of bugs. If you use this debug spot, be guaranteed something weird will happen in your run, okay? But there is a way to fix this. That's why you're gonna use empty scrolls to teach yourself necromancy and greater blood magic. With this, you're gonna go to the grand library, take the gold that is lying in there, and then go on a ritual circle and make love with the goal. I think the more clever people are gonna already understand what we are doing with this. Who will the goal make love with? The game considers us as the marriage. Yes. If you use that debug spot, you can make the goal, make love with a character which wasn't even in your party, the marriage. And the result? Now we are in control, in full control, mind you, of the abominable marriage as a main character. And I know what you may think, the abominable marriage is surely not the strongest character, is, uh, is uh, actually quite suboptimal. But not only this is the only way to guarantee a quill to everyone, but also, with the amount of stuff we will get, we really don't care about this, trust me. Now, use a single empty scroll to teach yourself phase step. In case you don't know, phase step allows you to knock leap by pressing C. This means now we can go out of bounds whenever we want, wherever we want. Congratulations, we won the game. Yeah, it costs 10 mind with each knock leap, but we can have infinite access to mind restoring items with our empty scrolls. But relax, these two can cause a lot of bugs. That's why we will only do it in very specific situations. But I think our journey was already long enough. Why don't we save the game for a second, okay? Uh, what are you saying? We are in hard mode and we can't save the game. Ah! Foolishness, my friends! Foolishness! If you think we can't save, it's just because we still did not get the piece of the puzzle which connects us to the save files. And that's why you are gonna follow me to the ancient center square. Then position yourself right here and no clip. Then click. This debug spot right here, other than giving other more useless items, gives us... Infinite Book of Enlightenment. You see, hard mode does not remove the possibility to save, it just removes the access to the Book of Enlightenment. Of course though, the developer did not think about the possibility of using debug spots for Book of Enlightenment. And that's why now we have unlimited access to save files. Now, save immediately, imagine if your PC crashes or something, we are safe. Since we are here, let's also teach us Blood Portal and trigger the two Blood Portals in Mahabre, one in the Tower of the Endless, one in the Grand Library. And then, using of course a phase step to dodge all the possible battles, because yes, now effectively we can dodge all the possible battles, let's trigger even the portals in the other zones. In the process I also want you to think for a second about the situation we are in. We can dodge all opponents, we can fast travel with the blood portals, we have infinite saves, and we still have a lot of empty scrolls in the inventory. Yeah, they are very bad conditions, right? No worries, because now we're gonna gather the real supplies. And uh, there is the annoying Black Witch again. Now, we could simply face step over her, but let's start to take a teeny tiny advantage from our empty scrolls, shall we? Not a lot, we are just gonna teach us Black Orb, nothing more, okay? It is also very poetic being able to kill the Black Witch, a Grogoroth follower with Grogoroth magic after all. But without further ado, going to the fortress entrance. Here, with each click, we get 5 Book of Enlightenment, in case you didn't want to get 99 before, 10 Iron Arrows, 2 Lesser Souls, and then some other decent stuff like Explosive Vials and Purifying Talismans. Are you realizing what we are doing with the foolishness of the developer of forgetting this powerful stuff around the dungeon? It's not a third part tool or a mod, it's fear and hunger. And we can do even better. Remember I told you to save scam this part of the entrance, right? That's the cherry on top. If you knock leap into this exact place and start clicking, this is the most broken debug spot with no downsides in the whole dungeon. Empty scrolls, quills, a lot of different weapons, including Eastern Swords, and it teaches your whole party Devour, Marksmanship, Necromancy, Locust Swarm, Mastery over Insects, and Demon Seed. And while some of these are useless, Locust Swarm. Locust Swarm on all your party members is no joke. Are you seeing? We have 99 empty scrolls in the inventory, and we are not even using them, and we are getting stuff we wouldn't even be able to get with those, like Book of Enlightenment and skills on other party members. 
Oh, the Spectre decided to appear unexpectedly. Let's kill him, also because I want to explain to you something. The reason the Spectre appeared is because now we have the Eastern Sword in the inventory. After we kill him, the Eastern Sword will become purified, only one of them. But there is a way to get another one, and we're gonna discuss it very soon. Also, as you can see, we lost some arms. This was not random, I wanted you to see we losing arms. Give me like five more minutes and it won't matter anymore. Oh, and since we are here, wanna take a little revenge against those stupid dogs which probably killed you hundreds of times? Tell me, does it feel good? Because to me, it feels marvelous. I think now it's a good moment to address something I didn't mention up to now, because I did not want to overload you with information. But I think it is time to show you. We have more than four party members. And in case you didn't already notice, our hunger level is going crazy. Both those things are a consequence of the debug spot. The hunger part is not too important. If you leave it as it is, technically, you don't even need to eat anymore. But the important part is the party members. Normally, the game would prevent you from getting more than four party members. Needless to say that debug spots are able to completely bypass this. But what do these extra party members do? They are not in battle. Wanna know? If someone dies, the next one in the line enters immediately into the battle. What does this mean? As long as the main character does not die, we have a lot, and I mean a lot, of party members. And very soon, we will break this even more. But I spent enough time showing you all the little toys we can play with. It's time to use the empty scrolls to learn all the skills available in the game. The skills are always gonna be present in our skill menu, so they have literally no downside, there is no reason to not learn every single one of them. And it's not over, it's finally time to improve even the equipment of our party. First of all, take the second Purified Eastern Sword. How do you do that? Now that we already purified one, go into the thicket and defeat the ghost with the sword that is already laying on the ground. This will give you a second Purified Sword. This is the only way to get the two Purified Eastern Swords in the same run. And then back in Mahabre, it is time to go into the secret laboratory and position four arms to get the Sergal Spear. Nah, I'm just joking, just no clip with face step. You see, Sergal Spear is the strongest weapon which can be wielded by the Abominable Marriage. We could call it its own endgame weapon. With this being done, it is time to use necromancy on all the ghouls and the skeletons of the dungeon. And some of you may be wondering, why can we do that? They are not from debug spots, shouldn't the game prevent us from getting more than four party members? Listen again to what I just said. More than four party members. The game, in these cases with the skeletons and the ghouls, specifically checks if you have exactly four party members. But we don't. We have like seven by this point, and after our necromancy, they will be even more. Oh. Oh oh. Uh, <laughs> I devoured a goal accidentally. W whatever! Guys, guys, with the amount of stuff we have right now, are you seeing Locust Swarm, equipment? We don't really need another goal. That goal will probably never enter into battle. Also, go into the Ancient Pit of Enlightenment and click in this exact point to get Najra in your party. Go back to the debug spot in the level 1, in order to teach all the new party members Locust Swarm. Also, if you really want to optimize things even more, go into the alternate Nosramus hideout and collect the scroll of Pyromancy Trick and Combustion, and do whatever you want with it. I would suggest having it on your main party to have more chances to burn opponents, but not on your main character. The main character has way more stuff to do. And since we mentioned burning, let's also collect the blue sin, and with the lesser souls we got from the debug spots, it is time to transform it into the cursed blue sin. We now possess in our hands all the requirements for the ultimate equipment. Is that it, though? Technically, no. Did you lose any limbs like I had? Or, I don't know, do you want to heal from some statuses like fractures, maybe, in case you got fractures? Be happy, because now we're gonna go into the Tomb of the Gods and give the girl to the Moon Lady to immediately restore all the limbs, all the states, everything. But wait, without the girl we cannot do ending A, isn't that bad? <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you forget we have an infinite access to girls using the debug spots? But first, the ultimate battle setup. From the debug spot in the Temple of Torment, we got Penance Armor Chestplate. This still cannot be removed, but it prevents you from getting your limbs cut off and doesn't give you bleeding. Needless to say, this goes on everyone. And then, as a headpiece, we are gonna use the Empty Scrolls to get Gaunt Bessinet. The Bessinet offers the same battle protection as the Penance Armor Helmet, the only downside being that this one does not protect against Peck. But do you really think in our conditions we have to care about Peck. As for the weapons, the Abominable Marriage uses the Sergal Spear, and the others use the Purified Eastern Sword, the Cursed Blue Sin, and then, since I love it, I'm just gonna put more Eastern Swords on the others. As for accessories, it just depends from your personal preference, honestly. I would suggest giving to someone a Black Witch Soul, because it is able to apply poison with the normal attacks. Only one Black Witch Soul, though, because too many would be uselessly redundant. Others instead can have White Angel Souls, which give extra turn in battle, or if you're really hardcore, you could get brown vials with the empty scrolls. Brown vials are a consumable that activates for the current battle extra turns, and if you do that, you can keep something else in the accessory slot, but uh, we are already too strong for anything in this dungeon. And all the empty scrolls we have in our inventory at this point are basically pointless. Do you even understand the absurd level of immortality we reached? Abominable Marriage can keep almost nothing, okay, but we don't need anything on him if we can just tank the damage with our 10 party members. I think it's also a good moment to precise something. There are some very minor things we could have done before to improve even more the current situation. But by looking at this, wouldn't you agree that it's just useless overcommitment? And that moment is finally arrived, the moment in which we will use all the fruits of our work to achieve all the endings. And let's start by talking about Ragnavaldar as ending since we started with him. I want to do the other characters as endings because it is basically the same exact procedure, but by selecting a different character at the start. And this is another reason for which I took Ragnavaldar. This is usually considered the hardest as ending in the game. Sometimes people consider Enki as ending harder, but it's just because they don't know the power of Locust Swarm. But still, in these exact conditions we can achieve the ending without fighting anyone. We can use the empty scrolls to get every single soul of the bosses required for the ending. But now, we arrive to my favorite part. As you may know, you cannot get in the current version the Salmo Snake soul from Empty Scrolls. When you write Oh Lord, give Salmo Snake, the game gives you Salmo Snake meat, not Salmo Snake soul. So unfortunately, we will have to fight an opponent with the potential to die. I mean, we won't die regardless, but with the potential to fight someone and have some repercussions, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is time to show you the real super in power. Something stronger than anything we could get from debug spots. If you put the language of the game into Russian and load the game and write this in the empty scroll in this exact order, very slowly to be careful to select the correct letters, then you will get a... Uh, you will get this, okay? Now, let's put the language back to English, and there you have it. Salmo Snake Soul without having to fight the Salmo Snake. Yes, that's simply a bug present in some languages of the game, but the Russian is not one of those. So by changing the language in there, we can actually bypass the bug. And just like that, there it is. The requirement for Ragnavaldar as ending has been achieved without fighting a single enemy. Now, since I am an RPG player, of course I don't want to just bypass all the fights. I mean, you spent 20 minutes watching me discussing stupidity about the spaghetti code. Of course I am gonna give you some good fight content. But as you can see, the battles are no match for anyone. In the literal Skin Granny battle, we don't even care about keeping the Salmo Snake's soul to prevent the mechanic, because Skin Granny is dead before even caring about it. One thing you may notice during these battles is that we don't even need to have a proper strategy. We just unga bunga. We just attack. We just don't care. Mechanics, what are those? You attack those? And as you may notice, I am being very reckless in these battles. I don't care about guarding, I don't care about creating tanks. That's because even in case we die, 
We saved right before these battles. We have unlimited saves. We have everything. We do not risk of losing any progress. And if we lose just a party member, that's fine. I'm not even gonna reset. We have plenty of party members ready to take the spot. But wait, we are the marriage. We can't achieve as ending as the marriage. What can we do for that? We will go back to this later. Now, let's fulfill the other endings. Let's start with ending D. For Francois, psh, we, we don't even need to do the talk mechanic to prevent him from attacking. We can just attack. We almost one-shot both the arms. Our power is so absurd that Francois, which is potentially one of the strongest bosses if you don't follow the mechanic, is a joke. And then we go to the void. Fun fact, you won't be able to use immediately face step once you're here, because I guess that's considerable a bug in the bug. Whatever. After you take a party member, you can use it once again. This will unbug it, let's say. Ugh, what a terrible word I just say. And, even funnier, we can just skip the Sylvian battle using face step. See, I am near my new god version, but I am an RPG player, so we are gonna do this regardless, just to show you how easy is this battle. As you may remember, all our party knows Locust Swarm. And do you know what is the primary weakness of Sylvian? She can be stunned. And Locust Swarm stuns all the body parts of the opponent. All our party knows it, we can literally just use Locust Swarm and everyone else can attack the torso. We don't even need to destroy the tentacles and take the battle more slowly. I don't know if you are realizing where we are. We are mindlessly clicking attack on the torso of what is considered by a huge part of the community the second hardest boss fight in the whole game. And yeah, after a few swings, that's ending D right off the bag. Now, ending Sita, whoa, 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 we do not have Legard, and in hard mode you cannot get Legard. How the hell do we do ending C? Oh, I, I guess the, the video is over. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. Nah, I'm joking. Debug spots coming clutch again. This, in this exact position, gives us Legard, but it also turns the main character into the mercenary. Again, I don't think by this point that we have the Abominable Marriage as main character this is relevant anymore, but this is one of the reasons for which I avoided taking this spot up to now, so also be sure to save before taking it. After that, go back into the void. This time, I will skip Sylvian to focus the, um... Challenge on the guard. Uh, yeah, ending C obtained. Okay, it's gauntlet time for ending A and B. While going there, let's also make fun of the biggest newbie obstacle, the Elite Guard, and of the funny man with the two heads, the double-headed Chromolar. There isn't really anything else to say, we can just face step our way through the whole gauntlet, the scariest place of the dungeon, the most dangerous one, the one with the most amount of enemies which can potentially harm you, is a joke. Just one little thing to precise, which uh, I had no idea about, because I've never used the phase step in this case. If you use phase step in the penultimate zone of the gauntlet, the one with the wrecking ball, okay? Use phase step in there, you get teleported to the previous zone, what? So for that final zone, you cannot use phase step. You always discover something new, I guess. I mean, I would have never realized this without this video. But still, after this, it's Grokaroth time. Again, realistically, we can of course take care of this by just normal attacking and having a tank with pheromones or warcry. And in case someone is low on HP, if you want, you can really just use light blue vial. Thanks to debug spots, we have 99 light blue vials after all. But still, there is something I've never done, and I actually wanted to use this challenge as a way to experience it. I have never had all the dots of the game bleeding, poison and burning simultaneously on Grogger of Torso. And since in this moment I don't have to care about the safety of my team, Chains of Torment and the Darcy normal attack are more than enough to apply them. This is the first time I do this, and honestly, even though it's not something incredible, it still made me smile. And there you go. That's what's considered the hardest boss fight in the game, defeated by some random guys with some sticks. 
And then ending A. You may have noticed I don't have the girl in my party. That's because I wanted to show you another debug spot we can use. Here, if you click, you can get the girl in your party. It was an essential to use this one instead of the other one, but I thought this could have been a very funny detail. And another funny detail is on the way. We can actually end the fight before the girl gets fully transformed. We have to deal a good amount of damage, I don't remember if it's 4000 or 6000, in the phase 2 of the battle. And even with some misses, we were able to do it. And so, there you go, the God of Fear and Hunger, the ending A final boss fight defeated even before reaching its final form. Ending A obtained. And now, how do we leave the dungeon for Ragnavaldor as ending? Well, we can already do it. Let me explain. The S ending requirements only check if you have the character required for the ending in your party, but you don't actually have to be playing as him. What does this mean? We got all the souls necessary for Ragnavaldor as ending. Is Ragnavaldor in our party? Yes, there it is. That's journalist. The same journalist we started as. Let's make another example with Enki. Does Enki have the soul anchor equipped? Then once you ascend, you get the S ending. That is as simple as it seems. And with this, we can leave the dungeon for the last time and achieve Ragnavaldor as ending in easy mode. You know, there was another reason for which this video was born. Long time ago, I made another video about how to become overpowered in the game without using glitches. And even in those conditions, the stuff we ended up with was pretty decent, honestly. And some of the comments under that video specified how it would be cool to see the possibility to break the game in half using the bugs. In the past, I have always been a non-exploiter, we may say. Like, when I find a bug, I try my best to not abuse it. So on one side, we may say this challenge was a new experience, even for me. Even though some of the battles were kinda boring, honestly, because I just have to mash a button, it's also very funny being able to see other ways to completely annihilate divine creatures. But anyways, that's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, let me know in the comments what you think about it and what you would like to see in the future. But for now, I was for Apollo 94 and I will see you next time.